Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out another game from the LD29 competition uh, with the theme Beneath the Surface. This is the World Beneath and this is actually the post-competition version of this particular game. It's a very mysterious and quite beautiful cave exploration game, a first-person game, and it's procedurally generated every single time we play this we're going to find a slightly different cave to explore. Uh, and the reason that I chose to do the post-compo versions. I usually like to do the, you know, the one, the proper one that's done in the LD29 or the LD competition. Uh, I did this one because there were some pretty substantial improvements that I noticed that were made. Uh, a big one and a thing I complain about a lot in this series is uh, the mouse actually locks into the uh, web browser, uh, you know, Unity player. So that's kind of important. It means that I'm not going to be clicking on stuff all over my desktop all the time. So let's get into things. Uh, you may notice some very faint ambient music playing off in the distance, as well as a very cool and kind of like fractally crystallized kind of color scheme and, and, well, texture more so than color scheme. The color scheme is more of a muted navy at the moment, but it's certainly going to light up and the music's going to be well tied in with the things that we discover. Uh, texture work around here has uh, some moments where it's a little bit stretched out, but let's keep in mind uh, we're dealing with a game made in 48 hours and a rather ambitious one at that. Anything that's procedurally generated... Uh, in general, well, it pretty much is just going to be very difficult to make. So this has that, and actually has some pretty freaking cool stuff going along with it. So here's a new cave, and we seem to have some very pretty hits of orange going on on the walls here. Uh, and down here on the ground, that's a chest full of torches. And that kind of introduces the main mechanic of the game that makes it so interesting. Uh, we have a limited number of torches, and our goal, if there is really a goal, and there, I guess, kind of isn't in a way, uh, but if we're to assign a goal to this game, it's to explore as far as we can and perhaps get as deep into the cave as we can uh, with the amount of torches that were allotted. Now, let's not fall down there quite yet, because it's actually... Uh, pretty likely that once we get down there, we're not going to run into too many more torches. I want to collect as many as I can, as quickly as I can, and then we will see about perhaps exploring further. That is a really, really pretty uh, color scheme that's going on. We've got these, like, lavenders going into these bright sunburst oranges, and some more torches, of course. Can I actually see what's going on in the chest? It seems to be hovering just slightly off the ground. Uh, oh, I can't quite see inside of it. Uh, there are some nice little particles in the air as well, and I want to call attention to a very strange movement system. This is a thing that kind of, I guess, kind of bugged me a little bit when I first started it up. Kind of feels like the ground is always made out of ice. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to move and then stop moving, and I'll say when I stop, and then you'll see how far I actually seem to carry uh, through just sheer momentum alone. So I'm going to go move, 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 and then stop. So, yeah, that's quite a while, and then I actually seem to float up into the air for a second. I'm guessing that's probably a check that's put into play just so, uh, in case I find myself up against a ledge. Uh, that's since there's no jump button. Uh, instead, we have torches, and I just threw a torch there by accident because I was going to demo out to see that there was no jump button. Uh, but basically what happens is it's probably just to get you up a ledge in case you find yourself sort of stuck at an impasse there because not all the geometry lines up perfectly. And we also can find ourselves in a position where we're actually locked... Uh, out from any more progress, and that sucks when that happens. Uh, but anyway, we're deep enough now that the lights have gone out, and all we can really see is just the little bits of uh, particles in the air. Maybe that's snow falling down, I'm not quite sure. But we can throw our torches, and that gives us a few moments of light so we can see our way out of whatever room we happen to be in, uh, or at least hopefully we can do that. And, ooh, there's some wild strobing going on over here. Uh, but yeah, things get quite hectic as you get further in. You start to run out of ability to find more torches, and you kind of have to make do with what you have. But it's kind of a really beautiful experience. As you can see, the music is falling over these crescendos as we throw each one of these torches, and it just lights up these just beautiful colors in every direction. We've got, like, see these emerald greens and uh, the oranges again. In this room, I don't really know what's up with these rooms. I seem to find them pretty regularly. They seem to be coated in gold or something. Uh, but we can't, like, interact with that obelisk in the center, unfortunately, or I would have loved to do that. Got some cool-looking red crystals there. Oh my goodness, we got a very pretty-looking ice-covered room, it looks like, in here. And this is one of the things I really love about games, just the, the sense of discovery and exploration, and how it's like, we don't really have a time limit, we don't really have a focus. We can take our time and just look around and see what we can find, and... You know, one game might be drastically longer than another, it might end up yielding something I've never seen before, uh, it might be completely the same as it was another time, it's it's really hard to say, and I think that's the thing 
that would make people really interested to keep coming back and checking on something to see if maybe there's more than they saw last time. And uh, the, the framework's all here, like, if they just wanted to go nuts and add a ton of stuff to this game, I could easily see myself playing this for a very long time, even exactly in the state that it's in right now, uh, with just sheer more content. Uh, it would be kind of cool if there was some sort of, like, a way to perhaps get really lucky and finish things, but again, it's not really necessary. Um, you know, the fact that this is just so atmospheric and there's so much just really nice, vibrant music playing, it just puts you in the mood to look around and just see what you can find. Uh, so we've got 13 more torches left. We are burning through these very quickly, and I'm feeling like uh, very likely we're not going to run into any more down here, and I'm probably going in circles now. It gets very difficult to map out where you've been and where you haven't been. Uh, and, oh, maybe I haven't been over here yet? Well, with nine torches left, I'm probably not going to make it too much further. Uh, and also, I seem to be going up more than down. Oh, wait a minute. There's some orange in here. That means maybe more torches? Yes! All right, we've got some more torches. Again, the momentum really strange as I sort of flew off that ledge. Uh, I ended up sort of just hovering in the air for a moment. So, I mean, not sure what that's about. Maybe there, again, was another reason for it other than what I just sort of postulated earlier in the episode. Uh, but it's uh, something I haven't really seen before, the way that the movement is handled in this game. All right, so ice room, and then that breaks open into a big old regular cave. I kind of wish there was a little bit more diversity in the geometry as well. Uh, you seem to find a lot of rooms that are just sort of very similar to each other. Uh, perhaps some very unorthodox or very large uh, rooms would be kind of cool to see. Maybe even discover some kind of underground lake or something like that. Uh, and then of course you do seem to run into this pretty often where you just kind of run into a dead end. And that's just the way it goes and you know when that happens there's not much you can do about it other than try and backtrack. I mean, if you really wanted to get ambitious, I guess uh, an in-game map would also be kind of nice too, but probably not really necessary. It kind of takes away from the exploration element, I would think. Um, the reason that even came to mind, though, is just because this really sort of seems to give me like a Metroid Prime vibe, and I guess this is the room we're going to end up in uh, as we run out of torches now. But yeah, I think the, the way that these rooms seem to be uh, separated by these almost like pipe-like structures uh, it seems to give me that same vision that it feels like we're wandering around in that wireframe mesh uh, Metroid Prime map or something like that. But anyway, there's not a whole lot else I can do at this point. Uh, maybe they should give you a cyanide capsule or something to bite into when you run out of uh, torches. That's a little bit dark. I, I don't actually get the impression that this game is trying to go for a dark mood or anything like that, although the premise seems to be that you find your way deep into a cave and then can't get back out, which, you know, pretty inherently dark, I would say. I saw that movie The Descent. It was uh, it was a pretty wild time. Uh, <laughs> not for uh, the squeamish, I would say, but that's not exactly where we're going here. This is a much lighter in tone, uh, much more welcoming and just kind of therapeutic an introspective game, and I definitely appreciate that, and I really like the visuals, I like the music even more, and I just wish there was more to see in this one. So that was The World Beneath. Uh, we're going to wrap it up at negative 328 meters below the Earth's crust. Uh, I did also find my way to uh, get out of this uh, area when I first got dropped in, which was kind of funny too. I'll, I'll pop that in at the end if you want to stay after the, uh, the closing to see that. But uh, there's nothing up there to see. It was just kind of a cool little Easter egg that I figured out how to kind of shimmy up a wall. But with that, that'll be it for another day, guys. If you want to go try this one out, it is totally free. You can uh, go play it right in your web browser. There doesn't seem to be a downloadable client version or anything, but that's all right. Uh, I'd probably recommend playing the post-competition version, but if you want to see the differences, that's kind of a cool thing to see as well. And pardon for me not really having anything to show you at the moment. It's like I'm out of torches, so it's either uh, bright gold room or blackness, and this is probably more than nothing. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, go check out the differences between the two, let me know what you think about this, what could be done to improve it, change it, mix it, upgrade it, uh, you know where I'm going with that. Uh, but just leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, that helps me out as well. Uh, also, if you're a fan of the channel or you find yourself here all the time, you might want to consider subscribing, that also helps me out quite a bit. And then you can see whenever I put a new episode of Indie Impressions or any other thing uh, that goes up on my channel, you can find that right in your YouTube uh, uploads area. So with that, I will head out for another day. Thank you again so much for watching and being here. Hope you'll come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. And I hope you'll come back for even more LD29 coverage in the days to come. So I'll catch you next time. Have a great night.